I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Although, Dave, you, you, I don't know if your mic's good. You sound kind of like a nasally Jew. <laughs> ah, go <laughs> self, Carson. <laughs> I just kidding. I've been waiting. Uh, I've been You're not waiting. kidding. You're telling the truth. That's why I told you to go. Yourself. If you're kidding, I'd be like, ha ha. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I've been waiting like five years to do that joke. I'm not even kidding. I, that's good. You know, I, I appreciate that. I, I have a joke I kept in my back pocket for three years, but when I pulled it off, it's the best joke ever. <laughs> Want to hear it? Yeah. Well, yeah, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> um, all right. I'll tell too. So this is what you got to do. You're driving down the road with the family, with a friend, with a client, whoever. You're going through the country, and you're, there's some farmland, and you see a round hay bale. And all you have to do is go, oh, that's it. Right? And there's no getting out. They go, what? And you, you go, what? And they go, what did you just go, ugh, for? And it's like, oh, the round hay bales. And then you just drive. And they're like, what about them? pause You're like well i can't believe they still have them here they're illegal in vermont new hampshire illinois and texas whatever you say it doesn't matter and they go why why are they illegal you go what and so they have to repeat it again it's painful they go why are they illegal pause pause and you go because the cows can't get a square meal then you just drive you don't say a word <laughs> <laughs> and they want to kill you because they don't want to laugh, but they're going to. Okay. They literally hate you for this joke. Great. And then that's great. Yeah. It's the, it's the best joke ever because it's the worst joke ever. There you go. <laughs> right. Right. Well, it only um, works on a flat earth, by the way. It wouldn't be funny on a globe. Right. <laughs> so, by the way, um, it's, it's Kaysen. Don't oh, yeah, it's Kaysen. Kaysen. Sorry. Yeah. Kaysen. Yeah. It's a little different. And, uh, oh, I yeah. see that. It was very small. Yeah, yeah. Kaysen. Yeah. Kaysen. Um, yeah, really appreciate you coming on our, our little little small okay. show. And um, I do want to tell you, before we start, I do want to just get this out of the way. Oh, it's boy. A it's just a, no, it's a huge thank you to you. Um, you, you don't know me, but I, I, Feel like I know you because when I five years ago when I started this journey uh, about learning about flat Earth and all that, you you were you were there with me. You didn't know you were, but you were there with me. And I went through some anger times. I went through some lonely times. I went, you know, you know how it is. Yeah, you know how it is. And um, so yeah, so I just wanted to tell you I appreciate. I appreciate you being there with me, even though you don't realize you were. So I appreciate that. I get a lot of messages like that. And that's, I guess that's why I keep doing it. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. And I've probably watched, um, this isn't a bragging thing, just a, just a realistic thing. I've probably watched almost all of your interviews. So however many I kept, <laughs> At this point, I think that's impossible. There's too many. <laughs> yeah, there's too I did, many. But I did there was, four there was today. a point. I did four today. <laughs> <laughs> right. There was a point where I was like, you know, man, I, I'm over the 300 mark, over to the, you know, 350 mark. And uh, I always learn something new, though. And and um, it, it, they're great. So I really appreciate it. Um, um, adding more, trying to get better, you know, fixing uh, issues. So. And um, so we got you for what five hours? I think is right. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We, we're that gonna, would be we're amazing. Gonna to pack, we're we're going to try to pack it into an hour, and if not, if we need to come back, we'll do another show.
All right, welcome back to another segment of Awake the Iron. I'm your host, Kason Pratt, and with me as usual is CJ, the Lion of Lasanniville. If you didn't think we talked about any topics in the past that were too crazy, today is a biggie. So um, we're going to have a guest on, uh, Dave Weiss, flatearthdave.com. And sounds crazy. Flat Earth, is the Earth flat? You know, how can that be? Um, but we're going to, instead of, um, what was the Herbert Spencer quote? There is a principle which is a bar against all information, which is proof against all arguments and cannot fail to keep a man in everlasting ignorance. That principle is contempt prior to investigation. Exactly. Thank you for uh, helping me out there. But um, yeah, instead of just having contempt for this topic before we investigate it, let's 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 just listen. See what see what this guy's got to say, right? So I don't know. You know, let's give it a listen and see if anything makes sense, or if we need to check in, or if there's deception there, possibly. Uh, that's all. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So enjoy the episode and we're going to have Flat Earth Dave on. Welcome, Dave. Thanks for being with us and uh, for another segment of Wake the Iron. And um, this is a great topic. This is probably going to get a bunch of people triggered. Um, I don't know exactly our audience. Uh, if they've been with us, they're on a journey of awakening and um you know, we, we go through okay. lots of different deceptions, probably a bunch of them that you, you know a lot about. But this is just one that's going get, to get people probably triggered. I don't care. I'm only interested in what's real and what's true. And for some reason, that makes me like an outcast, I guess. So um, we're going to go through some of what, what Dave's here to talk about. And uh, you can find everything you need about Dave at flatterdave.com, right? And we'll go through You've some other things that, yeah, that's right. And and uh, yeah. and it's great, a great idea to have everything in one spot. Flatterdave.com so easy to remember. Yeah. Um, in, in case, but, yeah, <laughs> in case you forget the name of my website, it's here, it's here, <laughs> right there, and it's also yeah, right yeah, yeah. there. Okay, just in case. <laughs> just in case, right? We we'll get we'll get it. Um, so, but first. You, you you're doing this, you know, part of this, your whole life is this talking to people about flat earth. Okay. That sounds crazy, but, and I know you've probably told it before, but tell us how you got to that point. How does someone do this, you know, all in? I have no idea, man. How I got here is insane. It's totally insane. So I'll, I'll tell the story the best I can. Um, I, I grew up in Fairfield County. Where are you guys located? What state? I'm in Ohio. What state are you in? CJ's, oh, CJ's okay. nearby in Kentucky. Okay, so so I'm I'm in Connecticut. You know, in Fairfield County, it's like it's like the it's the fancy part of the East Coast compared to the West Coast. And uh, I you know I grew up, went to high school, and you know you got to go to college. I got my business degree, came out, went working in corporate America. And then I left corporate America. Most people just get trapped there their whole their whole life. And uh, I started my 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 own company. I I actually made a vision board, and then it came true. It was amazing. And I have my own company, and I'm making tons of money. Things are going great, and I was doing a little podcast called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, and it started to conflict, you know, with with um. My work, you know, my my partners were like, you know, if our clients see this and that, you know, it's going to cause a problem. And, you know, one partner didn't care. The other one's like, you know, problem. And then I realized I need to do this more, more uh, full time. And the idea of leaving what I built, you know, which is everyone's goal in life is to, you know, you know, I, I guess, I mean, it's the American dream, you know, it's to have your own business and stuff it was insane, but something made me do it. You know, I asked for a sign and bam, the signs came down super hard on me and I did it. And, um, I was sacrificing a lot, 
But the thing is, I work harder now than I ever have before. I'm working all the time, nonstop, day and night. And um, I love it, though, because the thing is, if I had a regular normie job, as soon as I get home, I'd be doing this for fun. Somehow, this realm we live in delivered to me a possibility of something I never could have imagined. So, luckily, I'm able to support myself, support my family, and at the same time, wake people up. It's, it's, you know, in my life, I've always been in sales. So that's a, that's a, you know, a detriment because people are like, oh, you're a salesman. You know, you, you know, my good, my neighborhood friends, my childhood friends are like, you could sell somebody used underwear, you know, and that, that's, that's, <laughs> it's a compliment, but it's an insult. But, and I'm like, I'm not here selling people. And, and through my career, you know, I was selling small ticket items. And then I was like, you know, I want to sell big ticket items. And I got in, I was in the printing business and I started getting some big web jobs. And then uh, I left the printing business. I got into the solar business. I was doing residential solar. And I was like, you know what? There's, we got to do bigger. And I did commercial solar and I got bigger and I got my own commercial solar development company. And it just, things are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The problem was, was the, the, the lead time, you know, like the, the lead time from conception fulfillment was two years if you're lucky sometimes sometimes longer on these big solar projects and also big ticket items only certain people can afford them and so i put on my vision board i said i want something that gives me tons of free time to do what i love that is a no-brainer as far as the cost and that helps people and i had no idea what that was no idea and somehow I came up with this app and everyone loves it. It helps people and it's waking up the world. I mean, I, somebody's got my back. So I see it. So yeah, well, that, well that's short awesome. story yeah, long, that's awesome. short story long. No, no, that's fine. Hey, I asked, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, go ahead. Yeah. CJ. What, um, when did you, start questioning the globe model or you know when did you well, was that an aha, aha gradual or all of a sudden hit hit with a ton of bricks <laughs> it was um pretty much same story as all all of us but in 2014 i was doing my podcast deep inside the rabbit hole exposing all the big conspiracies and i thought i was waking up the world but the problem is you wake people up to 9 11 sandy hook you know boston everything and they go right back to sleep. They just they just fall back to sleep, even though the proof is undeniable. They just they're like, ah, well, you know, and they go back. But then someone threw flat earth at me and I, I deleted them. I banned them from life. You know, you can never comment on our social media again because you're too stupid. You want me to look at a flat earth video. How dumb is that? And I refuse to look at it. And then Sophia Smallstorm, she, uh, you know, a big documentary maker on the 9-11 movement and everything else. She uh, said, she said, Dave, I think the earth is flat. And uh, I got pissed. And I was like, all right, what? She was just watch these videos. And it's like, oh, oh, that's where you're getting your information from a video. No, YouTube is a resource of information that you need to analyze just like everything in your life. Everything you see, you got to analyze it. Is that good? Is it information? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it nonsense? Is it factual? And um, so in 2014, I went in to debunk flat earth and prove the globe. And I started seeing, uh, you know, the number one proof. People say boats over the horizon. And I started, uh, I started looking at uh, ships over the horizon. And I got a, I bought a, you know, spent a thousand bucks on a super zoom camera and a tripod. P nine hundred had just come out, I think. And I zoomed in on stuff that should have been 50, 60 feet behind a curve. And there it is. I could, I could see stuff. So that was, uh, that was the one that got me. That was the one that got me. But people, people don't know what I'm talking about. When you look out, you can't see these boats. But as I zoom in, making them bigger, you can see them. Now, this is an interesting day. There's, there's swells out here that have a wide amplitude. So you see this boat? It, a glover would say it's behind the curve. Wait a minute. It's not behind the curve. And look carefully. This boat, is that boat behind the curve? Or is it just behind a swell? And then if you look carefully, you'll see the water way beyond these boats at certain times. 
So when there's closer amplitude waves, it just creates a horizon that just stays there. And then the boats in the distance gets smaller. See, in the distance, some a glober would look at this and go, look, you can't see the bottom of the boat. It's behind the curve. But there's times where you're going to see the water for way beyond that boat. So the swelling of the water will fake earth curve. But look, you can see the water beyond it. See the water beyond it? So there's a, yeah. there's a lot more going on than... Uh, then yeah, look, look at the water up, way up beyond there. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, me, if someone just me, says, "Oh, it's it's Earth curve," right? Then we just think right. it. But now that we can see, sorry, let me. Yeah. I'm trying to interrupt because I want to remind the audience that we've got visuals. So a lot of people are just listening to the audio, but we have we're on video. So go right. to wake, wake the iron dot com because Dave's showing a lot of visual. Yeah, so when he I, says, I, hey, this is here, a very visual topic. Yeah, but what I, what so, I'm showing here is you're going to see this boat. You can only see the very, very top of the boat, and they'll say that that's curvature. But if you want, now you can see water miles beyond that boat. So how could you see water if the Earth is curving, hiding the boat? And the answer is it's just in between swells. That's it. See the, you see the water way beyond it? Mm -hmm. Again, we weren't taught to think this. We were brainwashed as kids. <laughs> hey, the Earth is a ball. The Earth is a ball, and if something goes over the ball, it just disappears from the bottom up. Hey, that's true. Unfortunately, we don't live on a ball. We don't live on a. Whoops! Here goes my focus. There we go. We're back. Um, you know what? I remember. It, I remember the Bill Nye. Bill Nye uh, had a video where he had a curved yeah. thing, and he pulled a boat, and he's like, "Hey!" And it looked like what you see, but that's not actually what's happening. So he's misrepresented it. For sure. A hundred, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And the people will look out and go, oh, look, there, there's the earth curve, right? This is, we have a vanilla sky. We have smooth water. And when I flip the frame here, you can say, oh, they'll tell you that this boat's floating in the air. It's refracted up. And this is the earth curve. But in reality, I just took out the background showing you that there's actually land back there. I just photoshopped out the background. So if there was no land there, no land beyond this, it was just looking out on the ocean, this boat would look like it's floating. But now your brain could put it all together and go, no, no, that's just glassy water reflecting the sky. But that's what happens a lot. They say it's a mirage. They say all sorts of stuff on a floating boat. It's ridiculous. But And, and mainstream science comes up with all of these excuses. It's, it's laughable. So I feel like the um, people we might we might back up a little bit. People, a okay. lot of times, me me included, uh, people have a the a wrong idea of what people mean when they say flat Earth, right? Uh, uh, pancake in space or something. And I just want to clarify that we're kind of like let's if you're if you're explaining what you're talking about. But if you start from the beginning, like, okay, just throw yeah. out like space and balls, balls in space. We're going to start. <clears> oh, <throat> yeah. There you go. That that's the one that, yeah, you, you Google it. Right. And you probably you see Google that flat right? earth images. And the first picture you see is this from the flat earth society. We're not a pancake floating in space. Right. The only people that think that are people that are um, just trusting Google to serve them. We're not, a, you know, though. So, what are we, the only pancake planet out there? You know, are the other planets pancakes? So now you're assuming planets, you're assuming floating space, you're assuming a bunch of things that are scientifically impossible. Uh, you know, a high pressure ball, you know, a rocky, lumpy rock with smooth water with air adjacent to a void of no pressure. Well, gravity, gravity's holding the air down. And we could easily disprove that that's not the case. Um, so we're not a disc floating in space. That's, that's important to know. Um, you know, when you, when you Google, uh, flat earth or the ice wall, you get, you get these, what is going on here? Um, here we go. You get, uh, you get, they show you the turn up in space or a boat going over the edge. This is all mind control stuff. This is all mind control. This is all to make you laugh at flat earth and, uh, and, and never really address it. So Large bodies of water at rest lie flat. See this floor? It's flat. These lights over here are reflecting on the floor. Here's another light. It's reflecting across a curved surface or a flat surface. All balls have no curvature. Therefore, the Earth has no curvature because it's a ball, right? 
because <laughs> all balls do have curvature. And it's measurable, testable, provable curvature on a ball. There's none of that on the earth. Well, the earth is so big. You're a microbe and uh, you're a microbe on a basketball and it looks flat to a microbe. Um, no, they want us to believe that the earth is a certain size, 24,901 miles around. So there is a curvature formula based off the Pythagorean theorem, which is real. And we can tell you that 10 miles, there's 66 feet of curvature. 10 miles, that seems like a lot of curvature for 10 miles. That's what the ball requires. A physical ball requires a set amount of curvature. And there may be visibility that won't let you see 10 miles. That means, not that it's curved, it means that there's visibility that won't let you see 10 miles. Then there's a clear day, and we can see 20 miles. But the ball does not allow no matter how clear it is, to see past a physical horizon. But on a flat mm -hmm. earth with an optical, right? Right now I'm hiding my my face, my mouth, because there's a physical curve. You can zoom in, it ain't going to help, because there's a physical curve. Clear up the air, take the smoke out of the air, you still can't see me because there's a physical curve in front of my face. We can see things too far. We can see things too far beyond... You know, just we can see things so far away, it would require the Earth to have a radius. A radius is a point from the center to the surface. A radius of over 200,000 miles. You know what the set radius of the Earth is? 3959. Yeah, just under 4,000 miles. So, so, you know, as the ball gets bigger, the curvature will be less and less. The things that we can see, the distances that we can see would require the Earth to have a radius of 200,000 miles versus the stated radius of four, just under 4,000, 39.59. Yeah, so, what's right, the, so what is the explanation of that then? It's as flat. As, you know, what would, what would, I know, but what's the other, what's the opposite view? Like, well, yeah, what are the, you can see that what, far because... Okay. So they always say they always throw out refraction. You know, if something's close, they can claim it refracts up. So you can go to the Metabunk, the you know, debunking site, and it's like, well, I'm seeing an object that's 50 miles away, and now my altitude is so and so, and then they'll say, well, it should be behind, uh, you know, 700 feet of curvature, whatever it is, and then they say, then you can move the refraction meter, and it'll refract it up, refract it up, refract it up, refract it up. It's at eye level. Oh, I can see it now. That's what I'm seeing. And they go, oh, that's because there's a refraction of X, Y, Z, right? So they just literally allowed you to put in as much fake refraction as you want. And the thing is, looking over distance through a fluid, the air pushes things down. It doesn't push it up. Get a, get a draw a line on a wall or something and get a, um, a glass of water and set your camera up looking at the line and slide the glass of water in between the camera so it's looking through, and that line will be lower in the glass. It'll be lower hmm. because it pushes it down. It doesn't push it up. It pushes it down. And you know what? Surveyors, when they're, when they're surveying things, they don't account for that drop. They just call it earth curve. And you know when hmm. surveys are – surveyors, when they're surveying, they can only do like – a hundred, like a hundred feet or a hundred yards, some, some short, relatively short distance, anything over that, um, they can't do accurately. And even that they can't do, because when they do these things, they get, they say, okay, well, we expect it to be so-and-so. So they do a whole bunch of readings that are all different and anything that falls out of the expected range, they toss out. And then they take an average of what they go in their pre assumed, um, you know, ranges it's literally pseudoscience. So here's, here's um, one that you can't call refraction on. So from this mountain where we're up high, air is clear, we can see these mountains um, over 700 miles away. Seven of them. Seven? Eight. Eight mountains. I keep saying seven. Eight mountains. They're all there. They're absolutely the mountains. There's no question about it. They're all in the right positions, right shapes, and everything. And the globers will be like, well, you, you can't see the bottoms of them. Just like the waves, there's mountains out here in front of them blocking, mm -hmm. right? These mountains that are closer to us, even though they're probably smaller mountains, they are smaller mountains, 
they're closer. So they're bigger and the bigger mountains are getting smaller. So everything is, you know, due to perspective, but it doesn't matter because the tops of these mountains should be over 40 miles below a physical curve, 40 miles for to you, for you to believe in the ball. You have to believe that each one of those mountains is refracting up and stopping at eye level. The area in front is also refracting up because that should be down and everything's refracting up and everything is magically trying to stop at eye level. Do you know what mainstream says about this picture, this photo right here? Okay. I don't because they won't comment on it. They pretend it doesn't exist. They literally pretend it doesn't exist because they can't address it. Hmm. They can't. They can't. And, you know, another, another one I show is uh, this one. Large bodies of water at rest lie flat. Water at rest under freezing conditions will freeze and make flat ice. So here is a, is a flat um, canal, whatever, reservoir. And our guy went out there, put his camera at six inches. Oops. Pause. Six inches from the surface of the ice? Yeah, six inches from, hold on a second. I did, uh, what's going on here? I lost it. And it's gone. And it's gone. Okay. Try again. Here it comes. So now you see it. There you go. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. I see the light. Right. Sorry about. Sorry about that. So here it's we go. Okay. You, you got a lot going on there. I know you. I know here. You here it is. Here it is. I just had a. That's right. Here's the. Here it is. The guy went out here, and he put his camera just less than a foot. We'll call it a foot, and he put these lights out here a foot off the ground. This one eight miles seven six and five at those distances according to Globe Bath, and he proved that the camera heights and the ice height and everything. And remember, water lies flat, right? This should be, well, I rounded I rounded down. I gave them like a 25% um, gave back to the globe. They didn't have to. 30 feet, 22 feet, 15 feet, and 9 feet below a physical horizon. But we can see them all, and they're all stopping at eye level. They're all on the same plane. Now, are these lights conspiring to say, hey, let's trick this? Whoops, I said it. And, uh, and, and we're going to all stop at eye level. Let's... Let's trick this fool, okay? And uh, we're gonna we're gonna line up. We're gonna line. It, the the ice here would have to refract up a foot or two. And the and Earth is flat. It's demonstrably, provably, testably, scientifically flat. With top, it's a topographical system. There's hills yeah, and valleys. Right. But water tells us the the truth. The water tells us the level. Well, that's and everyone everyone knows water is level it, it's so good at that that we use it in construction right yeah. uh in a level it, it, yeah in a level there's water i mean that's the whole point so i guess maybe it is it's difficult for people to see that and and for me i i like occam's razor you know the simplest explanation is usually the right one and so you, you said is it refracting is it doing all this or is it is it just flat like that Seems reasonable, yeah. but it, you can't get around the maybe the years of programming, right? That we've been right. indoctrinated. I think you mentioned that. Yeah. So this is the Suez Suez Canal, 100 miles long. They built it on a single datum line with zero curvature. There should be over a mile of curvature, a mile. You know, and then people say, well, you know, those those, those this and that re this uh, canal it has locks to lower the ship because of curvature. No, it's lowering them because of elevation. There's a difference. So mm -hmm. you want to build a canal from one coast to the other coast, and in between you have land that's you know let's say it's highest in the middle. Fifty miles in is the highest amount of land, and in that you know usually canals go through. Um, they connect the lakes, so they don't have to dig the canal the whole way, and you just go across the lake. Well, there's lakes that are elevated up on mountains. There's lakes, mm -hmm. you know, on, on land that's, you know, hundreds and hundreds or thousands of feet above sea level. So when a lock, when a, when a canal is trying to get to that lake, the lake's up here, not because of curvature, because of elevation. So they go into a lock and then they flood the lock so the boat can rise up. It goes across the lake and then it goes into a lock and they, it goes down. And now it's at that level. It gets back down to sea level. Zero curvature. That's locks because of elevated water areas. Water doesn't go uphill or downhill. Right. I so mean, the, the water each, does go downhill. It doesn't sit there. Though. Right, right. So each, in your example, each section of locks is another level section of water and you're stepping it up because you can't yep. ramp up, up a hill of water. But we're supposed to believe 
that there's curved water everywhere only on the yeah. globe right but water is flat everywhere else but on the globe somehow yeah i couldn't get around that water is a water was a killer a globe killer for me for yeah sure. water water you know tells us water is it's the science of water is it at ret lies fat at ret, uh, flat at rest well, what about a droplet of water that's a sphere you know your head's a sphere and orange is a sphere i go yeah well a banana is not a sphere and and a drop of water has surface tension show me a cup of water well water in space turns into spheres prove it prove it okay now yet yeah, on a zero g plane you can get a little bit of water and create a ball and it's going all over the place um and it'll break apart if it's bigger than a ping pong ball's worth of water but um that's it you know, they're not anything else you've seen on the international fake station is totally fake. Well, what I, do you I, mean it's fake? <laughs> I picked up on uh, real quick when you were talking about. Uh, they asked about, hey, what's the what's the excuse for being able to see these distances? And you said, oh, they just say ref refraction, right? It's refracted up. But I picked up on a little conundrum that that puts people in is the first claim is that the horizon is earth curve is the edge of of the curve but then they backtrack on that completely and say no it's refracted and it's like well wait is it physical curve or is it a refracted uh horizon right so they it puts themselves in a conundrum i think yeah it it does people don't understand that perspective how everything goes to a certain point and it all magically stops at your eye level. So if you live, you know, on the water and there's something, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 miles away, like buildings and a city, everything looks like it's at your eye level. Even the clouds, which are higher than the city, everything just goes to your eye level. Um, I show this often, but it's a good one. So I'm going to show it again. So this is a perspective grid. Here's a guy standing here. Have you guys seen this? I have, but I love it. Please, please yeah. go take okay. us through it. So, so his eye level is here. So I throw a mountain in here. Logically, we could say the top of this mountain is thousands of feet above his head. We can all agree with that. Sun is above the mountain. So the sun goes away. Is it below the horizon or is it beyond the mountain? Right. It, 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 it's behind the mountain, basically. It's 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 yeah. beyond the mountain, just beyond like. It. This yeah. sun, I'm looking up this building, it's noon, it's going to about one o'clock. The sun is beyond the mountain, not beyond the beyond the building. And if you want to see it, you can go up high, you'll get a balloon, float up or walk backwards and you'll have a better angle and you'll be able to see the sun again. It's just beyond the building. Okay, So the the sun is beyond the mountain. And so if this guy went backwards, <clears throat> the mountain would get smaller and smaller. And they could see the sun again, like he, there was farmland behind him and he took off. And so the top of this mountain here, We're from still his the point of, oh, damn it. <laughs> damn the it. I, photo the, of the, mountain. I the photo of the mountain. Hold on. The hold on. I got it. So oh, here we go. There, so, there you go. Yeah. Okay. So the guy's yeah. back. You guys got it. When I screw up like that, you got to tell me sooner. So, <laughs> okay. so the sun goes beyond the mountain. And so if this guy went backwards, the mountain would, the top of this mountain, even though it looks like it's at his eye level from his point of view, is really thousands of feet above his eyes. That's what we see in reality. The tops of the mountains look like you're, they're at your eye level. So if the sun goes away, did it go below the horizon or beyond the mountain, just like it went beyond the building? Went beyond the mountain. And if we add the sky with the clouds, these clouds, they're all due to perspective getting going down also and getting merging with this horizontal eye zone. And so the sun goes below the horizon or just beyond. It goes beyond. Now, what's here? This line represents the top of the mountain, thousands of feet above his head. It also represents the compression of the atmosphere, the clouds. Even if there were no clouds, the atmosphere becomes opaque over distance. It all gets compressed into this horizontal eye zone, which is thousands of feet above the mountain. But again, 
it looks like it's at his eye level. It looks like it's at his eye level. And so the sun just went beyond it. And you think, you know, people are like, well, no, it's that's because I'm on a ball falling backwards faster than the speed of sound. And the sun staying still in the sky, even though it's moving a half a million miles an hour and we're orbiting around it at 66,000 miles an hour. It's still in relation to me falling over backwards faster than the speed of the sound. Because that's what you have to believe. The sun's going down, you're falling over backwards faster than the speed of sound. I get, so, you know, I do this a lot and I have to tell you something. The, the more I do it, the more I wonder how the heck anybody believes in the heliocentric model. It, it's baffling to me. It's baffling. So, so yeah, <laughs> go ahead, CJ, you got something? <clears throat> yeah, so I just want to maybe not necessarily back up, but just we can back clarify, up. clarify for people what it is you're saying. Okay, so <laughs> basically, <laughs> just because, yeah, you showed the example of what it's not, like because people say, oh, wait, the Earth is flat. What? It's just floating in space. And what about all other planets or whatever? So, so what it is that actually, like you're saying, um, forget the space and the planets and all that and orbiting around the sun and all this stuff, but we're here on this level plane and then the sun is doing something up here and so are the planets, right? So we're not even taking like space into account. Yes. Space right. is scientifically impossible. Think about it this. Large bodies of water at rest need containment. Like a pond, if there wasn't a side of the pond of the land that was higher than the water, the water would roll away. A lake is a bigger pond. The world of oceans are a giant lake. And the shoreline that goes all the way around our ocean, we call Antarctica. It's possible that it could go out farther, and we don't really know where Antarctica, the Antarctica starts. But Antarctica is the highest land on Earth. Did you know that? Antarctica, hmm. the shoreline of Antarctica is like 200 feet higher than the ocean. Do you know any other land that has that? So Antarctica contains all of our water. And this is where we live. The North Pole is at the center. We're not allowed to go beyond 60 degrees south unsupervised. This is, the, this is our prison. We're in here. And there's eight military bases evenly spaced all the way around that won't let anybody independently go to Antarctica. But I could book a trip to Antarctica. Yeah, you go from here to there. And they bring you to Deception Island. <laughs> or Rothschild Island. I'm not sure. They go to both. And they show you some penguins. They show you some ice. And uh, they kick you out, basically. And uh, that's it. You're not allowed to independently explore outwards across Antarctica. Yeah, we actually did an episode on Antarctica. Um, so, yeah, that, that was definitely interesting. And, let's uh, uh, let's talk about Antarctica for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, what was what was your episode on Antarctica covering? Well, sort of like what you just said, how you can't really independently explore, and yeah, sixty degrees is considered as part of the treaty where you can't really go there except you know yeah. on guided trips or whatever, and just lots of questions with like uh, the Operation High Jump, High Jump, yep. Admiral Byrd, and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. So there's a lot of good stuff. So somebody just recently found this uh this um dictionary. I'm not dictionary. Um encyclopedia, and it was from a uh, copyright 1954, 1955. Now we have people that said they were taught flat Earth and globe Earth in science class in public schools here in America in the 1950s. So the the whole thing that it's 2,000 years old and the Greeks figured out that's all nonsense. We can go over that if you want. So in it, it's talking about this expedition. And it says the trip took 22 days from, from uh, Palmer Peninsula to Little America. Where is that? From here, right off of Santiago, from here over to Little America. 2,000 miles, 22 days. That's less than 100 miles a day. Something seems off. So if we look at all of the Antarctic bases put on a flat Earth map, they're all here. They're all around here. Now, if he went from here to there... 
the mileage, it still seems, it still seems uh, kind of off. They say they made four stops before they got there. Four stops to refuel. So where do you refuel going over the South? Oh, this was a crossing the South Pole, allegedly. They called it crossing the South Pole. So here they are. Stop one at this base, two at this base, three at this base, four at that base, and there's their destination. Do the math. Makes a lot of sense. 22 days, some stops, whatnot. Um, that makes sense. And if you look, read further, it says the expedition made extensive flights covering all of the Antarctic coastline. Wait a minute. I thought it was crossing over the South Pole. Why is it? Huh. Talking mm-hmm. about the coastline, and if you're an independent person that doesn't know the Earth is globe or any, uh, the Earth is flat, you wouldn't know where the heck you're going. If they were just a hundred miles off that shoreline, a hundred miles in, ten miles in, maybe twenty miles in, you wouldn't see the ocean, and the ocean's probably frozen anyway, so you wouldn't know where you are. You wouldn't know where you are, and even if you saw some water, you'd be like, "Oh, well, that's a lake," uh, you know, whatever. Um, so. Yeah, <laughs> so there you go on that. That's interesting. I hadn't seen that before. Yeah, this is um, here. The this is this is where they went from. This is where they started, and um, I think this is it. Let me just make sure I got this right. And then they went. Oh, now this was another expedition. They went from there to there, and then over to Little America. Oh yeah, no, this is this is what they said that they did. And then they went to the South Pole, which is just inland a little bit. They told them they're at the South Pole. And then they went from the South Pole back. All right. So so what does that mean? They went from here to here to here to here. You're at the South Pole. How would you know? You're a thousand miles from anywhere. You can't see anything. This is a thousand miles. Maybe more. Maybe that's. 2,000 miles. And then they went back and they said they went to the South Pole. If you were on that flight, you'd be like, yeah, I went to the South Pole. You have no way to verify it. There's no GPS. Compasses don't work. Um, You have only to believe what your captors are telling you. So one, two, three, four stops and they go back. Does that look like they're crossing the South Pole? Nobody goes from here over to there. No one ever does that. They just do these little little roundabouts. And I don't even know if they went this far. They might have gone like this far. How would you know? And that's not How would all you the know? coasts, right? The explanation said that they... The, the, the explanation the said that they went over They went over the South Pole. They crossed the South Pole. Mm-hmm. They didn't. Mm-hmm. If you look at any of these things, you know, they'll go from here to here to here, you know, and then back. No one's going from here and ending up over here. Nobody goes from Santiago across Antarctica and ends up back in Australia. No one ever does that. This is all they did. They did this little, little thing right here. Here's, here's little America. I mean, that's a, that's one possible way they went. Nobody, there's no proof anyone crosses over because they can't. Earth is flat. Well, and we're finding this kind of issue with different subjects too, where, uh, people just accept what they're told. And then if you even take a minute to kind of check into it, you start mm-hmm. finding out there's some, there's some uh, funny business going on. Right. It, it's right. It, it's a problem yeah. with, with all kinds of stuff, you know, medical, uh, you know, government, right. that kind of stuff. Right. You show this picture to a glober <laughs> without knowing anything about flat earth, they see a globe. This is just a pond with all the land. And this is, Antarctica. We don't know what's out here. And, and so what, what they did to imprison our minds is they literally just cut it out, wrapped it around a sphere, and said, you can't explore this little white area, which is the continent at the bottom of the ball. You can go here, but you can't go here. You can't go. You can't cross over. You can't explore this. And that's the prison mm-hmm. for your mind. That's what they're doing. They're literally hiding the truth of our world, right? You can't explore this area because this area isn't down here. It's out there. It's everywhere. That's an amazing graphic, by the way. Yeah, that's, that's very good. That helps answer a lot of questions was just seeing it that way. 
Yeah, that's good. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a. People say, "What? What does it matter? What? What does it matter?" And uh, and and like, they're they're probably hiding more land. There could be other civilizations, technology, you know, cures for you know all sorts of disease. Uh, they're definitely hiding free energy. They're hiding ancient civilizations, which were way more advanced than we are. They're hiding the truth of our world. They're hiding the truth of your position in this world. They're hiding the truth that your thoughts create your reality, and they don't want us growing in numbers so we can use that collective consciousness to create the world that we were supposed to have. They're literally keeping us thinning the herd, keeping us sick, keeping us weak-minded, and keeping us scared. You know, if you live on a globe, it's pretty scary. You're spinning, you're whirling, you're twirling. An asteroid could hit, and we're running out of food, we're running out of oil. Oil is abiotic. We shouldn't be using it anyway, but there's plenty. Plenty. Animal Bird said, you know, there's enough coal in Antarctica to supply the whole world for a very long time. And then he's dead six months later. Yeah, when people yeah, when people say, why does it matter? I mean, I say, you don't think it matters if we're being lied to about where we are? I mean, how does that not matter, right? And these are the same people who might be enthralled with like a Hollywood film about like, you know, reality is this whole other thing, like The Matrix, or like yeah. they love those movies. But then, like, oh, what's it matter if if the Earth is flat and not a globe? What do you mean? What's it matter? You don't think it's important, like, to know where you are? <laughs> yeah, know who you are, know what this place is, know what was here before us, um, know your true potential, have access to, you know, healing frequencies. I mean, just the hiding of the Rife machine and 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 um, you know, healing technology which is starting to reemerge now. I actually have a Tesla coil style healing machine. It's amazing. It's incredible. And, uh, and, and, the, and the Rife technology, if people don't know what that is, it's a Royal, a Royal Raymond Rife figured out that every disease, every issue you have in your body has a frequency. And he found the frequency that would kill that disease. Everyone, cancer, everything. Um, and he found the frequency to correct these things and 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 do it. And uh, that stuff was just shut down by the Rockefellers because you know once you have the machine, you don't need a lifelong subscription and surgery and and all sorts of stuff. So it's all about keeping us weak and um, afraid and fear that we're overpopulated. And you know people are fighting for uh, for um, lowering the population. And because there's too many people, if 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 there was eight billion people, like they say, every family could have like an acre in Australia, and half of Australia would be empty. And I think in America, every family could have um quarter acre or half acre in Texas, and the rest of the country would be empty. Every American family, even the illegals that are already here, right? And so <laughs> this whole overpopulation thing is nonsense. Um, the the. I think there was a hundred billion people here in the 1700s. That's me. Sustainably people. And the last thing is people say, not the last thing, but people say, Dave, what is, what has flat earth done for you? What has flat earth done for your well being? And it's changed my life. I mean, besides what I do and stuff, but I'm more at peace because I'm not spinning. I'm not flying through space. I'm not worried about aliens attacking us. I'm uh, not worried about asteroids. I know that we're not overpopulated. I know that climate change is a HOA. And I know that um, all of these things they want us to be afraid of. You guys know that nuclear bombs don't exist, or is that too triggering for your audience? <laughs> uh, yeah, nothing, I've, nothing I've heard surprise. some. I've listened, yeah, nothing to surprise. I've listened to some Crow. Yeah, yeah uh, you, Crow thank God, seven. bro. Yeah. Listen, people, don't send your kids <laughs> to college. Rent them a house somewhere. Have a good time. Let them listen to Crow. One episode a day for the whole year, and they're going to be more employable and functioning in this world, and they'll probably find their passion and have a really great life. So a more peace, greater sense of freedom. I, I, no one can tell me to lock myself down. And um, also, you know, I have great hopes of being able to travel in places that we don't even know exist. You know that Japan found 7,000 new islands last year or this year? Japan found 7,000 islands that they didn't know they had. Yeah, it sounds, well, it sounds going impossible. on there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we haven't explored the oceans. We haven't just explored our lands. We don't know what's going on here, but we're going to Mars. 
Go to Mars. Go to Mars. <laughs> Wake up, people. Wake the F up. And the last thing is closer connection to the creator. Right? I know that I'm at the center of creation. I know that this place was built for us. I know that the creator's got my back. I know that you can raise yourself up and vibrate at a much better level than down in a scary place where all these, you know, satanic uh, anti flat earth globe trolls live, which is scary. Um, and, and that, you know, birds of a, you know, the thing, birds of a feather flock together. It's true. A high vibration people flock together. Low vibration people flock together. You know, if you go into a party and you're in a really bad mood, somebody came in, they were just really happy and everything. You'd hate that person. And then a bunch of other angry people get together. Yeah. That person's fucking happy. <laughs> that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and it's because you want to, you want to, you, people get a, get locked in to the way they, their, their, their mind frame. And the thing is, then have people have big egos and, and they're like, well, I, I don't want to admit I've been lied to my whole life and everything that I've believed, including, you know, Star Wars, Star Trek and everything else. Um, that's all just completely gone. Then, uh, that a lot of people just can't deal with it. And they're like, nope, nope, nope. So they'll go, you know, I'm going to prove Dave Weiss wrong. And they're going to Google flat earth and they end up, you know, at, at phony fake professor Dave or uh psyop man, Dan, straw man, Dan, or um, the new guy, um, Dave McKeegan. You know, these guys are out there. They're paid or possessed, maybe both. Um, either way, it doesn't matter. But these guys are out there just straw manning us. I mean, like, they call us liars when we're trying to figure everything out. They'll just lie about us all the time. They're like, oh, the Flat Earth Society had their meeting in, in of Oktoberfest. Well, they know we're not the Flat Earth Society. They know we're not a disc in space, but they'll use the disc in space as mm-hmm. their thumbnail. So it's amazing what these guys do. Um, but the thing is, the best thing is, I don't need to destroy them. I ignore them. I do what I do. A lot of people are waking up. A lot of people are getting the app and uh, connecting with people. Have you guys used the app uh, to find people around you? Yes. Actually. Yes, actually, yeah. I have. I have a Tuesday Tuesday mornings. I that's for it's Monday now, so tomorrow morning. Tuesday mornings, I meet with a few guys that we started meeting through through your app. Actually, sweet. We connected nice. that there's way. People have, there's yeah. People that have had babies already. Right? It's crazy. Um. <laughs> And uh, the the friend finder and the the profile section is going to get really good because you're going to be able to put in all the keywords stuff about yourself. Like, and I always use the example if I wanted to move to Florida, I could type in real estate broker. It'll show me all the people on the app that are real estate brokers. I could type in Florida. It'll weed out everyone except the people in Florida, and I could find a real estate broker to work with in Florida. Amazing. Huh. So, yeah, that that's uh, super fun. And now. Uh, you're in Ohio. How close is Ohio to Nashville, Tennessee? Pretty far, right? Like a uh, five-hour drive. Yeah. You guys should come to the debate on Tuesday, December second. Pastor Dean Odell yeah. going up against Pastor Greg Locke. I've been. I've had my eye on that. I've watched some of your. Going, I think you put out a few like little teaser things and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. going. Uh, I'm. I'm going down. It's going to be amazing. We're having a meetup the day before um, for you know four or five hours and then we'll all go to the the thing together and we got flyers to hand out to all the people going in this is going to be (laughs) devastating or he's going to be reborn but his attitude i don't know if he's going to be reborn but this is going to be devastating his entire congregation is going to wake up to the flat earth the biblical flat earth and the scientific flat earth and he is going to be left either in just a ego head spin um or he's going to be humbled, and then then he'll he'll get even bigger if he, you know, hum, mm-hmm. <laughs> humbles himself. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, but that'll be live streamed. Kind of an ego. Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah. It'll be live streamed, and there'll be a pop up that's going to come whoop, right up on the front of the app, telling you where to go, when it's nice. live, best place to view, um, mm-hmm. all sorts of stuff. But um, you won't miss it. December second, six p.m. Eastern. That's when it's going to be live. Put it in your calendar. Look for it on the app. You'll see it. And um, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. And let's tell everybody about the app, too, because it's really cool to see sort of, uh, you know, the alternative view to the globe model. So like we were saying, okay, it's not a disk in space. What is it? Like, where's the sun? Where's the moon? But the app shows, 
you know, okay, well, the sun is going above us around, and that's kind of how you can explain The sky everything. is a perfect block. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here is, here's, the, here's the friend finder on the app. These are just the people that are full-on flat earthers that have my app, right? They're pretty, pretty populated. Um, and that's not just America. We got the UK. You know, you can't even see the UK. It's buried. Um, everywhere. There's people. We even have a couple guys in Antarctica. Uh, <laughs> there's a guy right right there in Antarctica, right there at Casey Station. <laughs> got uh, in, in Australia, growing in oh, Sydney. Yeah. yeah. So, and all of these people, they're all, they're, cause every one of them, any one of them meets will end up being best friends because these are awake and aware, um, you know, people. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing. So these are the people around me. I could send out a broadcast message and say, hey, I'm having a meetup. We did that last summer. We had uh, 75 people show up. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, it, it's a whole bunch of things. And if you have the app, like do you guys have the app. Do you have a referral code? Tell people what your referral code is. Yes. So right yeah, here. It's, it, it's real easy. ATI, Awake the Iron. It just stands for Awake the Iron. ATI is the referral code, yeah. A ATI. So yeah. So when you yep. if, if anyone downloads the app from flatearthdave.com, um, it's three dollars, and it's gonna say do you have a referral code? Put their referral code in there, and then uh, they'll they'll go on the leaderboard. And the the app has tons of stuff for the three dollars, and you never have to pay anything else. If you want to use the messaging, like you can receive messages, but if you want to send messages, if you want to use um, the interactive games that are coming, if you want to. Um, use the profile section, social media. You have to pay the subscription, which is eleven dollars a year, not a month, a year. I always say it's like a copy margarita, and you didn't tip the bartender. But um, you can also trade in eleven referral points for a year subscription. So just throwing that out there for anybody that that's looking. But the app will bypass the uh, Google censorship. Right here is the daily video every day. Watch the daily video every day. I offer three Bitcoins for one globe proof. Pretty cool. That's over 100 grand. Three Bitcoins for one globe proof. But you got to watch the daily video for two weeks. You can go to the archive and just watch the last 14 days like that if you want. Frequently asked questions to make sure that your question isn't already answered. And here are all of the videos that YouTube is hiding from you on all of these topics. And uh, it's all there at your fingertips. None of the videos in here will, will show up in your YouTube searches. Uh, they don't want you seeing them. There's all sorts of other resources. And uh, the images resources, let's say, um, give, me a, give me a, like, you want to find a picture or something to show somebody. You're talking to somebody about Flat Earth. What do you want to show them? What do you want right. to show how them? About, uh, yeah, how about, uh, um, it's like, a sunset? Sunset videos well, or how that works. Well, well, no, this, no, this is the the that the, that in the frequent last question, just go. Where does the sun go? All the videos. Oh, there. right, right, but right, you say, right. You say, you know, a stars. Stars aren't what they show us. So I just type in stars, and here are a bunch of pictures of what stars oh. look like. Mm. Oh yeah, that search right. feature is neat. That's good. It's yeah, it's amazing. And then we just uh, we just upgraded, and it's uh, it's on uh, uh, it's working perfect on iOS, and hopefully tomorrow we upload. Um, on Android, but we have the video search. So think of a video that you, a good Flat Earth video that either you saw on the app or just a good Flat Earth video, and you don't know where to find it. Infrared, long distance. Infrared, well, it would have to, you, ha you like have to a, think of something, you have to think of something um, that that would be in the title or a tag work. So let, let's type in laser. Let's see, let's see, I haven't, I haven't done that yet. So laser. Let's see if it comes up with here a bunch of laser videos. Bam! Here's the one I was showing on the lake. Um, mm -hmm. All sorts of stuff. Well, try if infrared because I'm curious. Because yeah. you know those those videos of the guy who does the infrared camera views. From oh, the um, well that oh, would be yeah. uh, Jay Tolan. That would be Jay Tolan. So you just search Jay Tolan and he'll come up. So infrared, no results. Oh, okay. That's um, one word. Oh, that that could be it. Okay. <laughs> I and. <clears throat> I'll check the F R A. Just type in infra. It should. Let's just say, it's just one podcast with it. But um, okay. I, I, but if you type in J Tolan, um, T O L I N. Let's see if that works. And it, it's spelled correct. It all time. <laughs> yeah, T O L I. It's one L and J Tolan, right? I think. 
think yeah, it might be A N. Yeah, oh, it's Tolan. A, I think Tolan. it's A N. Yeah, T O L A N. That's better. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, there, he's in. He's in level with me. He's in that. Uh, I don't have yeah. that. I don't have that many. But we're adding more and more. So it, the yep, the point yeah. is, it'll show up. Like someone's like, you know, my, the, the, where's that video on Sky Ice? So I type in Sky Ice, and up comes the videos on Sky Ice. Bam, there they are. Yeah. Came up twice because it's on two channels. Oh, so, that's great. Yeah, we were we were talking about that on our Antarctic episode, actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. would have been, been handy. It, it, it like, hey, Dave did an interview. He was on Infowars. Um, Infowars, and I'll just search Infowars, and up comes uh, stuff on, on Infowars. And now this is the Greg mm-hmm. Reese video on Antarctica. You guys have seen that, right? Oh my gosh, so good! Mm-hmm. It's so yeah, good. he's so he, he's so good at that. So again, it's getting better and better. We're adding more and more stuff to it, and uh, it's just an easy way to find stuff. So when you're talking to somebody, they're like, "Well." What about you know this? You know what about the lamb? And you pull up a picture of the lamb uh, or a video. You can pull up videos and you can share them. It has sharing links. You can share multiple pictures at once. So again, it's a super good resource. Um, people ask about the wind currents. If you press this button right here, um, this is the the map. You you pop this up and you say um, altitudes are in HPA. So. We'll go to 10 HP. I would just go up, which is like 40,000 feet. And then you can see these uh, these wind currents. These are like 200 plus mile an hour winds around here. And and sometimes they're counter rotating. Here they are going this way. This one's going this way. And then you can figure out these plane routes and how they take advantage of these. See, that, that makes so, so much more sense than the, like, yeah. you see, the weather guy talks about jet streams, and it's like this, this uh, you know, up and down, up weird. Up and down, yeah. Yeah, and, and, but when and you map it, it that way, it just makes more sense. It's, it's perfect. It's perfect on here. And, and when you look, like, um, it, it's the same thing with uh, undersea cables. Um, uh, let's see, under. There it is. Undersea cables. These are the these are the cables, the undersea fiber optic cables that go. There's nothing from here, Santiago, to Australia, which would be even closer on a globe. They're all if you if you turn this into a, uh, a flat Earth map by wrapping it around the center point, none of these lines would break. They would all just they work perfectly because it's on a flat Earth. They wouldn't they wouldn't stretch if you polarize this map. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. The undersea cables prove the Earth is flat. Everything proves the Earth is flat. The fact that we're alive <laughs> proves the Earth is flat. <laughs> right, because all uh, of the air we breathe would yeah. fly out into so, space, right? Yeah. So wherever the sun is, it's noon. So if I called somebody in Western Australia right now, I'd say, where's the sun? They'd say it's directly above me and it's noon. Interesting. It's midnight for me over here in Connecticut. And now it's uh, morning here. Sun's rising. And then it's going to be noon right there. Bam, it's noon right in Central Africa. And the sun's just rising here on the East Coast. When it's 6 a.m. over here. No, it's 6 a.m. for me. Um, and it's rising. Sun comes up. East Coast gets the light first. West Coast gets the light second. Noon for me is 9 a.m. for the West Coast. And the seasons, we're going into the winter solstice. If I jump forward to December... So this is December solstice. The sun is out here over this yellow line, the Tropic of Capricorn. It's summer in Australia. And the sun goes directly over Australia, and it's hot there. Super hot because it's directly over them. It's cold in Ohio because the sun is far away. When something's far away, it looks lower in the sky. That's why the sun is lower in the winter. It's not lower. It's just farther away. Stand under a streetlight and then look at the streetlight down the road. They're both the same height but one of them looks lower because it's farther. Same with mm-hmm. the sun. Six months later, two, three, four, five, six, the sun moves all the way into the Tropic of Cancer and it's hot in Miami. You know why? Because the sun goes directly over Miami. Everything in between these two tropics is the tropics where it's always warm because the sun passes over them twice a year. How many times does the sun pass over Hawaii, not Hawaii, Ohio, a year? It does not. It never gets. It never uh, does. Right. right. It comes near you and it goes away. It comes near right. you and it goes away. But 
in the tropics, it's it goes over twice, except if you're right on the tropic, then it's kind of once and then it turns around. So it comes to you and it goes away. But if you're in the middle of the tropics, it just goes over you twice a year. It goes in and out, in and out, in and out. That's why it's nice and beautiful and warm there. That's the tropics. We're in the Arctic Circle. And then out here is the Antarctic Circle. Because here, the sun is arcing around us. If you're in here, the sun is arcing around the point, my tip of my finger. But if you're out here, the sun's not arcing around me. It's coming to and away. Towards me and away. It's Antarctic. The Antarctic. Sounds like a description of a clock, a sky clock. Weird how this gravitational beehive of a solar system we have is the perfect clock that's more accurate than any watch on Earth. Yeah, and it, everything resets in the sky, right? And um, how is that possible if we're, I don't know, you know, we're orbiting where I, I didn't actually even realize until I started looking into this, actually, I didn't realize that the heliocentric model, right? The globe model says that our entire solar system is flying through space too. I didn't even know that, that that was what they teach. Um, yeah. I must have mm-hmm. been in school that day or something. It, they don't know. They didn't teach that in school. I mean, now they yeah. teach it in school. So we're spinning at a thousand miles an hour. Crazy. We're orbiting at 66,000 miles an hour. We're chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour. But somehow, all, we're traveling four and a half billion miles a year, but somehow none of the stars ever change. Somehow, you don't notice any of this curving motion. Well, you're already going that fast. Well, this is speeding up and slowing down, and we're changing directions. If you're in a car going 1,000 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour, perfectly straight, cool. Takes the slightest turn, you're going to feel it. Have a dinner plate filled with water. A car speeds up, slows down, it takes a little turn. Where's that water going? Not on the plate. It's going off. So we're curving and twirling and spiraling through space, but none of the stars ever change, right? We don't feel any of those motions. Google, go to anyone listening, Google the hypersonic sled track and watch this, this NASA rocket sled go by at Mach 8.6. You, it's, wow. The sound is shocking. You can't even see it. Could you fathom what twice that speed is? I can't twice, even fathom, fathom what fathom. that is. <laughs> you can't even fathom. So, so this is what you have to think. The Earth is orbiting the sun 10 times faster than this. This rock, lumpy rock with smooth curved water and then air in a vacuum, scientifically impossible, is going around the sun 10 times faster than this. Worse. It gets worse. We're chasing the sun 100 times faster than this. So this lumpy water rock water ball is orbiting, and it's spinning while this is going on. It's orbiting 10 times faster and chasing the sun at 100 times faster in a spiral freak show. But then when we go out into nature, nature doesn't lie. What's going on here? This is a perfectly glass, calm lake reflecting a mirror image of this mountain which wouldn't be easily done on curved water and no one's ever seen curved water. And this tells us we're not moving. We're not moving. We're not moving. Earth is stationary, topographical level, horizontal plane. Yeah, definitely. Definitely not moving. It's interesting. You talked about people saying, yeah, you know, I can be in a car and I don't feel it move. But if it's a, uh, if you're going around, any change in direction is, is acceleration, right? And if you're going in a circle, that means you're constantly accelerating because the direction is changing constantly. Uh, I think 100%. people kind of forget that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People say, well, you know, uh, you don't feel spin, you know, because uh, I could be on an airplane and I could drink a glass of water. Another program response. Everyone has it in their head. I can get up and go to the bathroom. I'm like, okay. You want to compare the airplane to the slowest motion of the earth, which is the spin? Okay. Double the speed of that airplane because the airplane's only going 500 miles an hour. There, or you got to go 1,000. Double the speed. Double the speed. And the earth is air adjacent to a vacuum without a container. So remove the outside of the airplane. Okay. And now when you're flying across when you're flying across the ball, you don't want to fly off in the space, so you have to nose down 
at a thousand miles an hour, you have to nose down a mile a minute. So now ask the pilot to no, nose dive a mile per minute. You're not going to need to go to the bathroom because you're going to go in your seat. Your water's not going to be doing so good. <laughs> okay. And, and let me know, let me know how that's going. That's just the spin of the earth. That's just the spin. Okay. You want to talk about the other speeds? You can't fathom that. And most people go, I can't fathom any of this. Therefore, I'm just going to have to trust a guy in a bow tie who lies, you know, mm-hmm. failed comedian and, uh, you know, Neil disgrace Tyson. I'm going to have to go, you know, these guys that say you don't have time to talk about flat earth, but they have time to make straw man after straw man after straw man video about us. Uh, but they don't have time to talk to us, but for years you can make video after video after video lying about what we believe. Got to make you wonder. Really, really, really got to make you wonder. Anyone listening now, go outside tonight. Take a picture of the stars. Nice, clear night. Note where you are. Put a note in your calendar next year to take that same picture on the same night. Compare them. Every star will be in the exact same place. Every star will be in the exact same place. So how is that possible? How is that possible? It's absolutely not, it's not possible whatsoever. So if, if you think about it, they want us to believe, um, that's my stars. They want us to believe that, you know, with all of the stars, we have a hundred billion stars in our galaxy and many of them are binary, which means that they're orbiting around each other. This is what they tell us. Okay. They're going around each other in this crazy figure eight while we're spinning in the in the solar system we're spinning and moving and everything's going in every direction but never once has anyone seen two stars change position never any time of year even though we can see the same stars in uh, the summer and the winter many of the same stars not the same zodiac stars because those are on the other side of the earth none no two stars will change position you know when you move things change position no two stars ever cross each other's path. Why is that? Why is that? Yeah, what what is the what is the response to that? I don't, the I don't response know. to that is it's so far away. It's so far away that the that the 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 movement doesn't matter. Like when you're looking, you know, driving down the road and looking at the tree to the trees on the top of a mountain, they're moving very slowly, but the ones on the side of the road are whoosh, whizzing by you. Mm-hmm. Um it's so far away. There's no parallax, which is. But wouldn't, wouldn't there eventually be parallax? <laughs> you know, eventually, it, but yeah. never in the history. And and then worse than that, you know, they say the Earth is wobbling. Uh, every there's a there's a you know um, twenty six thousand year wobble, which means it's wobbling one degree every seventy six years, one degree every seventy six years. And that would mean that our North Star would change. Well, it is changing. You just haven't noticed it. And I'm like, well, what mm-hmm. about the the pyramid? The Giza pyramid has a shaft that looks right at the North Star. They go, well, it used to point towards Thuban, a different North Star, 2,000 years ago. And we just happen to live in a time where it points towards this star. And in 2,000 years, it'll point towards another star because we're wobbling. Oh, really? So you guys know about the Georgia Guidestones? Yes, yes. Yeah, well, the Georgia Guidestones had a, a very interesting uh, feature. They had a, uh, a little hole, and you look through it, there's Polaris all year long, every night. During the day, too, you just can't see it during the day. And it was built in 1981. You know, and you do a time lapse, and Polaris stays right in that tiny little hole. Well, one degree in the sky is, I believe, it's three moon widths. Well, it was up for over 40 years, so it should have moved a half a degree. A half a degree would have pushed it way out of that hole. You look through there, it should be off to the side by half a degree, which is plenty. And it wasn't. It was still right there in the middle of the hole. And we started making videos about it. Started going viral. People started asking questions. And what happened? A terrorist, some vandalist, Mm -hmm. blew it up. And before they can investigate, the bulldozer was there and bulldozed the whole thing down and took it away. All the evidence. Just like 9-11. Mm-hmm. They took it down yeah, yeah. because it was rock, rock solid pun, um, rock solid proof that uh, 
the earth is not wobbling. If the earth isn't wobbling, everything's off the books. Everything changes. And so that was something that they couldn't say, oh, no, when it was built, it was pointing towards Thuban, right? It was built mm-hmm. pointing towards Polaris. It's still pointing towards Polaris until they blew it up. Was it this year? I mean, just recently. Yeah, it was kind of recent. My son and I talked about maybe going to check it out. And then soon after, it, it got destroyed. And we were like, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Crazy. That's that is crazy, and uh, and and uh, no investigation, nobody cares, whatever, and it makes no sense whatsoever, no sense whatsoever. So, Dave, who who's behind all this? Who's at the top? Is it is it Klaus Schwab, the Bilderberg Group? Is it Satan? I mean, yeah, maybe it's you Satan. Know. You know, they, people say I was on a show recently. I'm not laughing because uh, I can't prove it wrong. It might be very well true that the deep state is the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. I don't know. Can't prove it, but I'd probably take a bet that that's right. <laughs> I, I might. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. you know, it, it's a, I believe it's, we're in a spiritual war. You mentioned something on your, on your yes. list of how, how flat earth has helped you. You mentioned closer to the yep. creator. Tell me about yep. that. Well, it, it brings you, it brings you, it make, you know, I didn't believe in God. I believe that I evolved from pond scum. I believed in evolution. I, I believe that we're flying through space. I love Star Wars. I believed all of that stuff. And uh, I thought NASA was great. And then when I saw the deception and uh, it forced me to, um, to understand that this place is intelligently designed, which leads you to no other, uh, another explanation than there's a creator. So here's the thing. The elite, No, they can't control a civilization that knows there's a creator. So therefore, they have to create a fake world, the globe, to have us participate in their system. They didn't make nature. They didn't make this world, so they can't control it. So they created a fake world, and they tricked us into participating in it. We registered with our birth certificate. Our our social security number (laughs) is traded on the stock market. You know that, right? Yes. And Unfortunately. they have us using their they have us using their fiat money. But it sneeze. Um, they have us using their fake fiat money and their fake world and their fake globe, paying their fake taxes and everything. And people just go along. Well, that's what I gotta do. You know, I'm only one person, there's nothing I can do, and that's what they want you to believe. They got you right there. People say, you know, when you um Flat smack them. They sometimes they get pissed. They're like, "Okay, all right. So what if it's fake? I know. I still have to go to work on Monday. There's nothing I can do about it. I still have to pay my bills. I'm only one person. Um, they'll say that, but you don't. They you don't know how powerful you are, and that's the trick. Once you know where you are and how truly powerful you are, um, it's it's game over for them. You know, one person awake can defeat millions of sleeping people. Two people together are way more powerful. A hundred people, a thousand people, a million people. It gets exponential on the power that we have. And that's what they want to do. Keep us separated, sick, damage our DNA, if that's a possibility. Mm. You know? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm tracking with you. Yeah, I'm tracking. Yeah. (laughs) So. Yeah. Wow. So this, yeah, it goes deep. Um, I feel like all of the things are, uh, we look in lots of different deceptions and I feel like they're all interconnected and this, this might be the key. I think it is the key. This is the key. The other ones. Yeah. I, you know, I had a thing in my podcast called exposing the big three. There was three deceptions that when you look into them with the real evidence, the stuff that you're not going to find on YouTube anymore, um, there is no denying that they weren't what we were told. And that's the New York event in September, the school that has a beachy name to it in Connecticut and the Boston marathon. Did you know that at all three of those events, there was drills of the exact same thing happening going on at the exact same time. There was, I think it was 17 drills on the morning of nine September that 
were simulating airplanes crash, being hijacked and crashed into buildings. 17 drills going on that morning. What a coincidence. In the school in Connecticut, in that town, they're doing a drill of a crazy autistic shooter shooting up a school. Same time. At the Boston Marathon, they're doing a drill of a bomb going off at the finish line during the marathon. Okay? And now most people go, that's not true. It actually is true. I'm not making it up. You can find it. And uh, and talk about a spiritual war. Guess what the address is uh, uh, of the Boston Marathon finish line? Hmm. You got I a computer? Know. Google Google Boston. Google 666 Boylston, Boston, Mass. And the pin will fall on the finish line. <laughs> How about that? On Google Earth. 666 Boylston, and the pin will fall on the finish line. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? So, yeah, so, so finishing my point, well, what finishing is, my is point, it, yeah, finishing my point is I called that exposing the big three, and I woke up tons of people to it. And they just get up and they go to work on Monday and they they're like, well, you know, the administration and you know it's going to change and we're going to elect the new leader and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they're and they kind of just go back to sleep. They don't care. They 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 don't they don't care. And um, then when you wake them up to flat earth, everything changes, everything changes. And when you wake up to Flat Earth, they can't go back to sleep. So Flat Earth has the highest retention level of any topic ever. Because when you wake up to it, you can't just forget about it. Every morning, you're like, whoa, Earth is flat. We're not spinning. This is crazy. Let me tell somebody. Everybody wants to tell somebody, too. So that's a good thing. Because now, with the numbers that we have, if everybody just told one person a week, we'd be done before the end of the year. It would, it would double. You know, you know the thing about doubling a penny? You know about mm -hmm. doubling a penny 30 times, 30 yeah, times every day, every day for like a every, month, every yeah. day for one month. And you, you, you have like yeah. $15 million. Okay. So we're at that point right now where we only need a few more doubles, a tweet, a big podcast, whatever. That's all it takes. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get out, you know, I'm going on some big, some bigger shows and uh, it's going to be literally we wake up in the morning and wow, wow, 10 million people found out about fell out earth last night. You know what that means? That means 30 million people are going to find out tomorrow night because those people are going to tell other people and it's going to be, it's going to be like that. And, you know, some people say, well, the elite will never let that happen because you know, if it does, their entire thing comes tumbling down. I think the elite know it's going to happen and they're trying to get behind it. They're trying to position themselves to, to maintain in control. I don't know. Maybe there is a reset coming. Who knows? But, um, you know, 666 Boylston, you know, the Helio Sinister Trick model is uh, all sixes. Six times six times 600 is the circumference of the Earth. The Earth curves curves at 0.666 inches per mile, 66.6 um, .6 kilometers per hour around the sun. Six times six times 60 is the diameter of the moon, right? Oh, those are just coincidences, Dave. Well, how about all these? Right, these are just go on and on. Pause and zoom in. They're all sixes, and they all have to do with the helio nonsensical um, system. And you know, and then you look space force. Look at this. Flip it over. Does that? The, even the little star is here. It's the friggin' Baphomet. What is going oh on with this? Hmm. And it, 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 it's it's on it's unreal. It's unreal. What is this one? Oh, you know these guys on the on the on the ISS. They everything is. Uh, I it says. I think when these guys flip over, their shirt says ISIS or I uh, or six six six. It it's it's crazy. All right, we're running run out of time. I don't want to. Yeah, you've already gone yeah. over, and we really appreciate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we. You could go on and on. Yeah, look at the, the, yeah. the some symbolism is just yeah. it's everywhere. Almost almost like it's by design. Oh, wow. almost, almost yeah. by, by, by design. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's almost by design. Yeah. Well, yeah, you got. I'm sure you got a lot of our people head spinning, and um, but in a good way. And for me, I I just had to be honest when we when someone say, "Well, do you you know how do you know 
that you know the the moon is this or this and then i'm like well to be honest i don't you know i know it's told but i don't really know so it takes some uh being honest with yourself i think to to really and just look at the evidence you know right just look at the yeah. truth uh, CJ always said, truth's like a lion. Just set it free. It'll defend itself. Um, a hundred, um, hundred percent. Yeah. Well, man, we really appreciate your time. I just have one quick question before we go. I wanted sure. to know what, what, it, and, and it's kind of putting you on the spot. So if you got to think for it's fine. What is one of your favorite interviews that you've ever been on? Or most memorable. I know which one mine is, and I'm going to tell you which one mine is. But I wanted to know mm. if there's a. Uh, you do so many, and you know they all maybe bleed together. But is there anything that kind of stands Man, out? Talk or? about bleeding together. Like I don't remember which interview I did this morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I mean, the Infowars was a big one, but I wouldn't say it was mm. my favorite. Uh, Stu Peters was uh, was a great one because um, he was true, truly interested. Um, that was a huge one. You know, I've done David Nino Rodriguez. He, when he woke up, that was fun. Um, oh, I, I saw that one. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I, I was on him like four times, but he's, he's kind of lost the sauce a little bit. Um, there's, there's so many, even some of the little ones, there's just cool people, but it's, uh, the aha moments that are, that are the best. Um, Charlie, Charlie Ward, when, when he, put his hands on his head. He's like, Oh my God. When I showed him the plane routes and he woke up, that was good. But he, you know, he's lost in the sauce. He wants his views and he stopped talking about it. Um, mm. Mm. Which one would yours be? I don't know. I don't know. How I, my, I don't know. Mine is uh, for me, it's easy. And I, and I don't know if you remember this, this is a, this is an oldie, but you were on with the APMA guys, uh, APMA, the APMA, the, APMA was the was the name of the podcast. There were four guys, four guys. And they, rated, yeah. they they rated themselves at the beginning of how, how much yeah. they thought of the fighter. The one guy's like zero. Yeah, was, one guy's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. two. And then at the yeah. end, they re-rated themselves. Do you remember that one? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was great. That was a good one. That was freaking hilarious. But it yeah. wasn't just funny. It, you you were completely fire hosing them and they were the one dude had a globe shirt on and by the end he like took it off he's like i'm done with it yeah coming up on this episode <laughs> yeah let him in okay give me one reason you think we live on a ball just one <laughs> okay. uh, it's okay to change your mind based on new information guys of course we live on a spinning ball flying through an infinite vacuum at speeds that are incomprehensible i mean that only makes sense it does so, to me <laughs> as we go because you guys are globers sorry no offense <laughs> you do have some crazy beliefs <laughs> takes that long for the light to get to us cool so story bro <laughs> <laughs> oh they both claim at least to have yeah. Uh, space agencies, and they're two countries that, let's, let's just say, don't like each other. <laughs> For those to cooperate on this sort of scale is unprecedented. You know, NASA says that Venus is uh, almost the same size as Earth. I say Venus is the size of a basketball. Prove me wrong. This is a okay. lot to process. Yeah, no, like I say, it may, yeah. <laughs> the globe has a huge advantage over flat Earth. It doesn't take any processing. You could just believe it. I don't even think humans have the capacity to actually cooperate on this sort of scale. Well, Personally. maybe they're not humans. Ma oh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> That's it. You're the one. Gone. <laughs> I owe you a new sweatshirt. You're the one. <laughs> the architect. It, it was awesome. So if, if anybody watching wants to see a really good one, there's, they're all good. But that one, uh, it, the, the podcast was called, a, it was APMA, A-P-M-A. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. awesome. It was awesome. I remember that. That's a good one. I got I to gotta pull that one up. Um, <laughs> speaking of shirts, this is a new shirt I have, Level Earther. Um, if anyone's looking for a, it's a great way to start the conversation, go into the shopping section. This button right here will take you to my shirt shop. And um, I have tons and tons of uh, fun shirts. But shirts that'll definitely inspire people um, to, you know, to start saying, what what the hell? What are you talking about? Everything leads to flat earth. Um, everything proves flat earth. Um, I like yeah, that one. It's kind of subtle. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. And um, so flatearthdave.com for all that. 
Get the app. It's three bucks one time. You get he's got full length movies in there. Get rid of Netflix. These are yeah. awesome. Um, my lunch break. My son and I are hooked on my lunch break be, because you. Oh, uh, how it. good is oh, he? How good is it's he? It's so good. Yeah. So good. It's, and and that's that's one to watch with your kids, right? Watch, Absolutely. Watch with your kids. Watch all because. Then you have a, an intelligent discussion and your kid is going to grow. His brain is going to grow from that. Not from the crap that they do in school. Let's strap a kid to a chair and a desk and teaching them crap that he's never going to use. You know, there's a tiny yeah, bit absolutely. of stuff that they make that's useful. Very tiny bit. But they, 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 they basically want to make you a good little accountant slave in their corporate system. But my lunch break, uh, amazing. And then Jake, I'm the improbable dreamer. Fantastic. Uh, have you started watching him yet? Yes, I follow him on Instagram. Uh, yeah, he's he's great. And, and, um, and John John yeah, Levi John, or John Levi. John Levi. Or, yep, down yeah. here, awesome. And all sorts of stuff, you know. And for those of you that want a little spiritual, Marty Leeds every Sunday morning has a uh, has a flat Earth church service. It's great. It's funny, and he swears a lot too. So it's it's fantastic. <laughs> um, it's it's really good, but he's so he's got it down. He knows the stuff, and then of course Crow Triple Seven. Save yourself the money. College, um, there it is, and it's only eight dollars a month. You can go listen to Crow. Listen to Crow without paying. You just listen to the first hour of each podcast. If you want the second hour, mm-hmm. sorry, you got to support Crow. Um, and uh, there's all sorts of all sorts of stuff on there. So yeah, my lunch break will will get you. And then have you guys checked out the um, biogeology yet? Biogeology, right here. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, oh, to the giant, it, the giant, giant trees. Have you gone there? Uh, mm-hmm. Some of the giant trees. The biogeology. I don't know. I knew on there, or maybe I just. Been no, it's been the there. Stuff. It's it's been there. And then uh, there's so you know, much. That's the, how big. That's how much stuff the, is on there. I can't even keep the, track of what all's on there. The lost history. That's a lot of Tataria stuff. Um, amazing. But the movies you're talking about right here. That just start yes. there. Start with the movies, and uh, and they're great movies. Even if you've seen them. If I open that up and click any one of the movies, um, I want to watch it again because they're really well done. Um, on Thanksgiving, um, I'm, I'll remind everybody, Marty Leeds, the guy that has the, the church, he made a movie years ago called Flat Earth, The Ultimate Litmus Test. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a while. But it, yeah, that, I think it, I did. So I'm featuring it on Thanksgiving because families are going to be lying around. Like, what should we watch? <laughs> and someone's going to pull up their app and go, Hey, I got one, and it's like a real movie. <laughs> and then the whole family gets sucked in, you know. And uh, I, had, you know, and then the, then they could start arguing, and it'll be fantastic. <laughs> you argue at Thanksgiving anyway, right? Hey, here, here's a little <laughs> trick to save some money for um, for Christmas on Thanksgiving. Bring up flat Earth, and then you won't have to buy anyone Christmas presents because none of you will be talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, yeah, man, I really appreciate it. It was it was great having you on. It, it was an honor. Uh, you know, right, it, it was great. Um, CJ, anything else before we head out? No, I just love to have you back, and thanks for your time. All right, yeah, man, let's really uh, let's, it, let's connect. Let's connect again, and uh, yep. And don't forget your your referral code ATI yep. for uh, ATI. If you download the app. Yep. Right, and the app can be found. The best way to get to it is just go to my website flatearthave.com. And click the link there because you, um, you know, on, on Apple, you can type in flat E, it'll show right up. Um, but on Google Play, the trolls tried to make an app. They stole the same name and tried there. I'd make a change. They'd add that change. And they were doing it horribly. But then they finally gave up a long time ago. Their app is horrible. So if you accidentally buy it before you ask for a refund, make sure you leave them a, a, a nice review. And also, if you have my app and you love it and you haven't left a review, leave a review because the trolls occasionally are going on and they're giving me some, you know, one star reviews. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, go in and leave a leave a leave a review to say that app is the greatest thing on Earth. They should charge fifty dollars for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yep. All right. Well, it sounds good. I really appreciate right, guys. it, Dave. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thanks, CJ and Kaysen. Right. Yep. Have a nice Thank night. You. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah.
I'll try to keep it pretty clean because I like when my kids watch the show. So all right, I won't. I won't we'll swear. The, I won't say yeah, retarded. I got yelled at today for that. No, I'm I'm bringing that word back. You and I, man, I love that, that word. word back. I love that word. It's the best. It, it's descriptive. <laughs> now, if you go, you're a f retard. It depends on who you're talking to, or whether that's an insult. Like if it's my best friend, you, yeah, he'll agree. But you, somebody that has a mental incapacity, you don't say that. You, right. you, it's like people are so triggered by words. The world is so f up. And they're like, well, you said a four-letter word, and that's going to offend me. I'm like, right. yeah, but the child trafficking and the fact that Jeffrey Epstein's children and Hillary's eating them, that doesn't offend you. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> but we're going to be afraid of words. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, okay, well, where to begin exactly? Uh, oh, so uh, CJ and I, CJ flat smacked me five years ago. He's my brother. Wait. So. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. And that's where the journey began. So I, I know that I know that you prefer doing shows with Globers or people that are questioning. And <laughs> and I get that. So we're gonna we'll try to keep it, you know, just light and fun. CJ's for you obviously and, your CJ's obviously your younger, good looking brother. That is very true. Very that's true. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I deserve that. I deserve that. Hey, loyal followers. Thank you for watching and listening. We're excited that the analytics show our audience is growing. Since we know you're out there, we'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or comment on a specific episode, please go to awaketheiron.com. You can also text or call us and leave a message at 601 654 iron to engage with you even more we are creating live q a episodes on youtube where you can ask questions or make comments in the live chat if you're feeling frisky you can join the show and ask out loud on camera or hide your camera if you don't want to be seen this is going to be fun subscribe to our email list so we can send you details on how to participate in upcoming live shows Go to awaketheiron.com and enter your email in the subscribe box. Come on, it's literally right on the front page. You should go to youtube.com slash at awaketheiron and subscribe there as well. Let's be honest, you're already there watching cat videos, so you might as well subscribe for our live stream notification. We look forward to seeing you soon, and as always, remember to keep your powder dry. We'll see ya.